can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Can you see my slides in presenter mode too? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, again, thanks uh, and happy happy New Year to all of you. Um, and uh, thanks for having me uh, at this meeting. Um, so I'm going to talk about the new X-ray integral field unit. Uh, I will explain you why we have a new a new one needed. So this is a presentation I'm giving on behalf of an international consortium. Uh, and I would like to thank in particular Philippe, who is leading the XIFU formulation team uh, at NEST. So for those of you who don't know yet what is Athena, first of all, it's, it means Advanced Telescope for High Energy Astrophysics. It's the big X-ray observatory after the two uh, great X-ray observatories uh, that uh, are currently flying, XMM Newton and uh, Chandra. And it is also supposed to uh, launch after the uh, spectroscopy mission, the Japanese spectroscopy mission, CRISA. It's a large mission of the European Space Agency Cosmic Vision Science Program. And it is planned now to operate simultaneously with the LISA gravitational wave mission. Um, Athena is enabled by uh, contribution from NASA and JAXA to the mission, but also to the payload. And it's dedicated to the study of the hot and energetic universe. And for this, uh, we have a payload which enables to touch on many corners of uh, astrophysics from stars, galaxies, planets. And this is what defines the observatory science of uh, Athena. So in a nutshell, uh, Athena is a large X-ray telescope that is led by ESA, two focal plane instrument, a wide field imager, which is led by Paul Nandra from Max Planck, and uh, the X-ray integral field unit, uh, XIFU, which I am leading on behalf of the XIFU consortium. And the combination of the two make it a very powerful observatory, which is which will be available to the worldwide community through a guest observer program. So if you are to summarize uh, what Athena is, uh, it's uh, images, wide field images, like on the left, it's a simulation of a deep field as observed by WFI, where you have hundreds of point sources, which are AGNs, and you also have diffuse extended sources, which are clusters of galaxies, hot gas in clusters of galaxies. So it's on one side, hundreds of uh, point sources in an image. And on the right hand side, this is a, uh, an X-ray spectrum recorded by, uh, simulated by XIFU, uh, extracted from the observation of the Perseus cluster by the um, ETOMI mission. And in this spectrum, you have a broad continuum, which is a thermal-like continuum. And on top of this, you have hundreds of lines. So in a sense, uh, Athena is on one side, uh, hundreds of point sources, and on the other side, uh, on the other side, hundreds of lines. And of course, uh, the information contained in the line uh, tells us about the abundance of the metals, the chemical enrichment of the of the cluster, but it also tells us about uh, the motion of the plasma in the in the cluster. So a lot of science to be done, and of course, uh, a great uh, synergies with uh, SKA. This has been the focus of a white paper that we published back in uh, 2018. It's a bit uh, outdated now, and in this white paper which you can find on archive. Uh, there were several synergies which were identified, uh, the cosmic down, the evolution of black holes and galaxies, uh, feedback in uh, galaxy clusters, non-thermal phenomena in, gal in galaxy clusters to, to, to relate to the previous talk, uh, detecting the cosmic web, uh, the physics of accretion and the physics of astrophysical transients and a lot of things about uh, galactic astronomy, stars, planets, pulsars and supernovae. 
and most of which uh, most most of these uh, identified synergies would uh, would be uh, would be the science with XIFU really. And uh, so I invite you to uh, read this uh, synergy white paper, which is quite exhaustive and discuss those uh, synergies in great detail. Now, OK, Athena was going uh, very well, very smoothly. It has been uh, a long uh, a long endeavor for most of us. Uh, it's a long term project, uh, which personally I got involved in 2020. 2002, the, uh, and uh, which was going smoothly towards adoption. And then there was a big uh, issue identified by ESA, which was a cost overrun. So now we are, the project was somehow stopped, and the project is starting again on a different uh, track. But before giving you how the new XIFU will look like briefly, I will introduce you the context in which we are today. And for this, I will use the presentation given yesterday by Matteo Guenazzi, who is the chair of the science of the new Athena Science Redefinition team. He gave a presentation to the community yesterday, to the topical panel chairs of the Athena community, and also the working group chairs. And so he gave a quite exhaustive uh, presentation about the context uh, of the new Athena. So the conclusion at the end, you know, we were running through the, the different reviews uh, last year, in, around before the summer. And uh, it was found that Athena, while it was technically feasible, it was not available, affordable in the ESA science program. The cost at completion of the mission was estimated to be 1.9 million euros, uh, 1.9 billion euros, and we need to bring down this cost at completion to less than 1.3 billion euros. Uh, the project was not stopped. We the 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 science program committee of ESA recommended that we reformulate the mission uh, to a new Athena mission, which the, with the goal of bringing its cost down to, to 1.3 billion euros. So the new Athena wants to build on a minimum disruptive solution. It's not a brand new X-ray mission. Uh, but it needs to be uh, reformulated in terms of science case. There won't be many more technology developments. Uh, those technology developments which are ongoing must conclude. Uh, the detection technology will not change. We will use all the technologies that we have developed until now for this. And we will not change the overall structure. So the solution has to be found between uh, the instrument consortia, the international partners and ESA. But what is very important for us is that a new Athena must preserve the flagship character of a large class mission at ESA. And for this, ESA has appointed a new Athena science redefinition team to guide the reformulation process from the scientific perspective and obviously to ensure that the flagship character of the mission is preserved. What it means though is that there will be there is no guaranteed uh, no guarantee that the previous scientific objectives will remain as driving of the mission because you know that they have to uh, identify a mission which fits uh, the bill and which is worth the investment. So it's quite a, a, a tricky exercise and the solution for a new Athena is not granted or guaranteed uh, given all the boundary conditions that are applied to us. The, what is very important is what is the timeline? How much time do we need to do this? So the first uh, time, the first uh, thing to do is to have a, con a conceptual uh, technical baseline by mid 2023 in consultation with the ESA Science Program Committee. 
we need to consolidate programmatically this new mission, and this has to be done by November 2023. It needs to be consolidated not only within ESA member states, but also with NASA and JAXA, again, with consultation from the science program, uh, science program committee of ESA. If we succeed in converging, and I, I will show you that uh, we are on a very good track to succeed, the idea would be to have the industrial primes to study the new Athena, uh, the new Athena uh, mid to late uh, 2023. Then we would start a phase AB1 in 2024 for about two, 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 three years. And the adoption of the new Athena would be in 2027. And then the, the, the industrial study, the, the industrial primes will build the, the whole thing. And we are expected to be launched about you know, 10 years after the adoption, given that we will have a simplified mission. We hope that uh, those simplification will enable to, to go faster. Uh, as I said, the critical role will, of the science redefinition team is, is, uh, is being defined because this team uh, will have to uh, ensure that the process leads to a flagship mission. So the science redefinition team led by Matteo Buenazzi and Mike Cruz uh, will have to review, update the scientific objectives of Athena, uh, introduce possibly new uh, scientific objectives. I mean, there had been several synergy papers, not only with SKA, uh, we have multi-messenger, astronomy, those, may, those fields which are emerging since uh, uh, we started the, 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 the Athena process may come in as a science requirements. Uh, of course, some scientific objective could be removed or uh, su superseded uh, by the evolution of the research field. So they will have to identify uh, those scientific objectives to identify, they, they will have to prioritize those scientific objectives to identify a minimal set which are driving the mission. I think we have today 20 or uh, more uh, core scientific objectives and they are equally equally uh, driving the mission and they want to uh, have much less of those driving the mission and you know all this has to be done uh, in in view of elaborating a new Athena science requirement document which will be based on those scientific objectives and at the end of the work 18 months from now those the, the the science redefinition team which is independent of the instrument consortium instrument pis will have to deliver a report to the director of science of athena of uh, isa and um, uh, and from there we will proceed a flagship mission, by, uh, they have found a definition. It's a mission which uh, is highly likely to generate a seminal change in our understanding of an important area of space science. That's how they defined it. So this is the context in, what, in, in which we are working. We have this, um, this science for definition team which will work on defining the science requirements for us. Uh, as of today, the XIFU for Athena, not for the new Athena, was um, was uh, a very ambitious instrument. It's a large array of microcalorimeters, transition edge sensors, which are cooled down to 50 millik. It was supposed to provide 2.5 EV resolution, spectral resolution up to 7 kV over a 5 arc minute uh, equivalent diameter hexagonal field of view with 5 arc second pixel size. It has a uh, low, very low instrumental background thanks to an active uh, cryogenic shielding. It is also capable of uh, observing bright sources to thanks to the mirror which is uh, capable of defocusing we can we, we can reach up to uh, one crab intensity sources and still deliver 10 times better spectral resolution than uh, than ccds 
and uh, it's uh, built by an international consortium like le led by France. Netherlands and Italy, and we have member state contribution from tens of, uh, of countries, plus uh, additional contribution from the United States and Japan. So this is on the left a view of the old Kyostat uh, of XIFU, uh, that Diwa, and on the right, uh, the focal plane assembly of uh, XIFU. So really, XIFU was bringing uh, the colors and the script to the movie. Uh, an XIFU provides fine imaging and multiple high resolution X-ray spectra uh, at once. And it was, of course, dedicated to the hot and energetic universe uh, science and uh, accessible for a wide range of uh, of uh, science and investigation. On the left hand side, you have a simulation of what would be an iron uh, abundance map of hot gas in clusters where you can resolve uh, changes in, in, in the abundance on very short, small, uh, uh, special scales. Uh, don't worry about the white dots. Uh, dots. Those are background AGNs which have been removed from, from, the, from the simulation. Uh, and on the right hand side, this is, as I, saw, as I showed earlier, this is uh, a Perseus like uh, simulation of, uh, uh, of it provided by XIFU, where uh, each line tells us about the physical properties of the metals which are uh, present in the cluster. So when you define a mission, you have to make sure that it provides a leap in sensitivity. And this is uh, illustrated here. I think our reference points for us is the CRISM mission, the Japanese uh, US uh, spectroscopy mission due to be launched uh, fairly soon. And so we are to compare XIFU and the uh, CRISM and the resolve spectrometer uh, on uh, on CRISM and basically we provide at the moment 30 times the effective area at 1 kV, eight, eight times at 5 kV and about 10 times uh, at 8 kV compared to the, uh, co compared now not to the, the CRISM uh, spectro resolve spectrometer, but uh, compared to the high energy transmission gratings of uh, Chandra. In terms of weak line sensitivity, this is shown on the on the right hand side. This is a convolution of the effective area and the spectral resolution. Of course, we gain uh, in both directions, but at the moment we are, and this gives at the moment a factor of eight improvement in sensitivity for weak line, weak narrow line uh, detection at one kV and about four times at uh, five kV. So this is indeed the uh, flagship character after CRISM and all this is subject now to uh, reconsideration because the new Athena will have different, uh, different uh, performance than uh, what Athena had. But I will show you that uh, the new XIFU will remain, retain most of its uh, its uh, science capabilities. And I think another way of uh, demonstrating the leap in sensitivity between CRISM and Athena is about the spatial resolution. Uh, CRISM will have a field of view about uh, similar to, to, to us, but with an half energy width of uh, about 1.4 uh, arc minute, whereas we have a, a significantly uh, larger field of view, but much, uh, much better spectral resolution. So what uh, CRISM will uh, tentatively see, we will be able to see it in, in great details. And this is again a simulation of a Perseus-like cluster uh, of an image on the left and the corresponding spectra on the right, where you see not only, I mean, on the, the, the improvement in spectral resolution on the left, but also the improvement in 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 spectral quality on the right because those two observations are simulated over the same exposure time uh, and that's that that's why we want to preserve most of the xifu capabilities so uh, the xifu the new xifu which is building up today as i speak uh, 
uh, will build on uh, what we have uh, studied previously. Obviously, we have been working very hard. Actually, when the project was stopped, we were conducting the instrument system requirement review, and we had uh, delivered the data pack in June 2020. 22 and just to give you an idea of the scale of the work done we delivered 100 um, documents of uh, uh, more than 5000 pages of uh, uh, documentation and of course the, the we as we were writing this data pack is has stopped the the the, the Athena project and so we had to reconfigure the review but uh, uh to uh, to uh, what we call now tentative system requirement review and uh, it was successfully successfully closed on September the 19th, and ESA praised the, the quality of the work done by the team, the, the quality of the data pack, and, and in fact, they, they realized that there was no showstopper on XIFU side uh, to, to adopt the Athena mission, had there been no cost uh, overhead. So now we are entering the reformulation phase of XIFU. We are heavily committed to contribute to the definition of a flagship mission within an affordable cost cap. Of course, uh, as the PI, I have to make sure that the good balance is found between simplifications and performance. We will we will wait for the, the inputs from the science redefinition team on the new Athena science objectives. I tell you, we are working extremely hard uh, with ESA and our international partners to simplify the instrument, in particular the cooling chain and the cryostat, which was uh, which were driving the cost of the Athena mission. There are options on the table. I will show you one uh, next uh, slide. And we are also looking at ways of relaxing some key interface requirements with the aim of my minimizing the impacts on the performance. So as I said earlier, the Athena uh, version of XIFU if you had a field of view of five arc minute equivalent diameter, we will probably discope the field of view to four arc minute uh, equivalent diameter. Uh, the reason is that it will reduce the number of radar channels, ease the thermal accommodation of the instrument. We will also degrade very likely the spectral resolution in the range of 2.7, 2.8, maybe 3 EV, just also to ease um, the some key requirements for, for us for the performance like the EMC, micro vibration, and so on. We will probably reduce the pixel speed to make them easier to read. Uh, we may also have an impact on the instrument efficiency below uh, 1 kV, but I tell you, we are not going to sacrifice uh, the performance of XIFU without looking at all possible mitigation actions, um, and this is exactly what we are doing today. So the XIFU, the new XIFU, will build on the previous XIFU, but I think the big change will be the cryostat and the cooling chain, uh, which we want to simplify. And for this, we will uh, use a passively cooled cryostat, uh, where we will use a, a succession of uh, radiative panels uh, to cool down the uh, the, the heart of the instrument to 50k, and this is basically what was used for the Planck uh, mission, and which is going to be used for Ariel and Lightburn. Uh, and the idea is to use this uh, V-groove technology, which you see that you see on the right hand side. Uh, it's a it's a mock-up of the Planck satellite where you have the three V-grooves, which uh, provide uh, interface temperature at 140k. 90k and 50k and at the end uh, the, the art of this instrument would be a 50k uh, diwa and instead of having a 2k core i think we want to have the interface of the of the fba at 4k and we want to use a, a us cooler uh, which would which could be a modified uh, version of the miri cooler which is operating today uh, on James Webb. There are some alternatives uh, 
to the to the NASA US cooler, but uh, at the moment we would prefer the, the 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 NASA cooler because it would be one cooler doing everything at the time at one time. And there is uh, also uh, some evolution that are needed um, on the, from the 2K core to the 4K core, and we want to reduce uh, basically one uh, 2K Joule Thompson. And if you go to the XIFU YouTube uh, chain, you will see uh, a previous a movie on the previous configuration of the of the XIFU cooling chain, and you will see there that. Uh, we had uh, several uh, different types of coolers, and the idea is really to make something very, very uh, much more simplified. So now we have also, uh, thanks to the ESA study team, we have now uh, the first uh, design or can design of this new Athena. So uh, this is the, we are not going to use the V grooves, uh, so to speak, but more uh, L grooves. And this is the payload module uh, module on the left, where you have the 50K uh, cryostat, uh, which is within these L grooves. And on the right hand side, you have the wide field uh, image. Uh, um, this is all, <clears throat> on the right hand side, you have uh, the payload modules uh, uh, contained in the fairing of the IN6 launcher. And again, you see uh, the, the, the cryostat, the XIFU cryostat open to the sky uh, on the left and the WFI on, on the right. And the good news is that there is an accommodation possible uh, for the two instruments uh, on the same uh, focal plane, which means that we can share uh, the mirrors which uh, tilts from one instrument to the other. So the short term plan for us is uh, to consolidate this new technical baseline, uh, early 23, uh, to close some trade off on the 4K core configuration, we have also a possibility to go maybe beyond 50K and cool down possibly uh, the instrument to 20K with this, uh, this trade-off to be performed. We have some filter accommodation to protect the, the, the focal plane uh, detectors to from external radiation. There are some uh, accommodation issues uh, to go through these cell groups, but this is being worked out. And we also have to uh, look at the cold harnesses and the number of electronics box, always in the spirit of simplifying the instrument. No showstoppers have been identified so, so, so far. And I, I can tell you when a project is stopped, uh, the team could just say, uh, could just. Uh, release the pen, put the pen on the table and, and rest. Uh, it was exactly the opposite which happened. The team got uh, motivated as ever to move forward and, and get out of this uh, and, and get out of this uh, situation. And they have been, the team has been working incredibly hard uh, over the last uh, six and uh, six, seven months uh, to come up with this new uh, XIFU design, which is a very different evolution from the previous one. So uh, we should be grateful to 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 XIFU to the XIFU team, but also to ESA and the international partners for making up this uh, new baseline. So to conclude um, uh, my presentation, I would say that we have reached uh, in. Uh, mid 2022 uh, maturity level of our instrument, uh, which was consistent with an adoption of Athena in June 2023, uh, which will be this year. Athena will not be adopted in 2023, we know now, but be sure that the knowledge we have acquired over the years will be used for the reformulation. And I can say that this is exactly what is happening and it, this explains in part uh, why we have done so well in so uh, in, a, in such a short amount of time. Uh, it is because you, we know all corners of the instrument and we know where the optimization are possible and where those optimization are uh, more likely uh, to help reducing the cost of the mission. Athena ought to fly with an XIFU instrument, which is its uh, 
which is its key instrument for many uh, of its uh, science uh, and this instrument will deliver flagship performance and we are very careful that this uh, is achieved uh, when uh, after the CRISA mission uh, has launched. We are, as I said, entirely dedicated to simplifying the instrument in compliance with the ESA requirements. Uh, it, I, it is also fair to say that it's a very, I mean, we, we built technically on, on, on what XIFU was in the past, but we have to build programmatically the instrument and it's a bit of a challenge, but there are solution uh, JAXA contribution, NASA contribution, member state contribution. All this is being folded in now uh, as, uh, as I speak. For XIFU, I, uh, I want to bring the message that the, those simplifications come with a penalty in performance, but those degradation of performance are uh, acceptable. Uh, we are convinced that they go in the right direction uh, to reduce the cost of ESA. Uh, as I said, reducing the field of view slightly, degrading the spectral resolution, touching on the on, on the pixel speed, touching on the effective error, the instrument efficiency. All this is leading is thought to lead to a cost reduction uh, and that it delivers flagship character of the mission will have to be confirmed by the science redefinition team. And for us, the big change uh, is the is the cryostat. We go from a warm room temperature cryostat to a 50K cryostat. And, and the previous cryostat was under his responsibility. These, uh, these smaller, uh, cryostat is back in the XIFU responsi responsibility perimeter, meaning that we have to deliver the ESA plug and play instrument uh, uh, with, within uh, this 50k cryostat. <clears throat> For us, the priority is to put, to put Athena back on track in the configuration endorsed by ESA. The one I showed is endorsed by ESA because it can. It was uh, worked out between ESA and the XIFU consortium, and the goal is that Athena regains robust robustness. While the programmatic landscape of ESA is being reshaped after the ministerial meeting at council level of November, but also with the arrival of a new director of science uh, early this year. And I think I want to bring this message very strong to you. There is a great momentum that has built within ESA and the consortia, the instrument consortia, to put Athena back uh, on track. And from this, uh, for this, I would like to stop here. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Didier. Uh, that was excellent. And we wish uh, the Athena team very best of luck to get the funds. And we hope to build up a strong collaboration with the SK community and Athena, especially on Galaxy clusters. Any questions? Yes, so we have Professor Spreen Kumar over here. He's an expert uh, space scientist in India. He has worked with NASA and he has a question for you. Uh, Dr. Tibel, thank you for the nice summary on Athena. And uh, as uh, Dr. mentioned, I think we'll, uh, uh, we hope the best uh, for Athena's uh, recommendation phase. The question I wanted to ask you was at this phase of recommendation, um, are you, as part of either work share or cost sharing, considering new partners? I know it's you have Athena is a very challenging mission, lots of things, and a lot of the extra astronomers in India are also very keen to see Athena uh, and Athena's results as well in the long run. Uh, just exploring the possibility that such a thing is there. Last year, uh, Director General Isa, as well as when I think uh, Dr. Punta Hasinger was also there in the meeting. We are discussing possible avenues for collaboration, but uh, I, I, nothing really emerged as of now, to the best of my knowledge. But now that you mentioned about the reformulation strategy or discussions from yesterday, uh, I thought I'd just put this uh, maybe too late, but uh, nevertheless, I just thought I'd put this question back. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, 
I would say to, I would respond uh, twofold. Uh, one is Athena is a, is an ISA led mission. International partner contribution have to go through ISA, and this is beyond my uh, my uh, remit. So that's the first part of the, the answer. The second part of the answer is at XIFU consortium level, which uh, we are managing. Um, we do not, uh, we have not identified uh, yet uh, the need for new partners. The new XIFU can be done, can be done with uh, the existing partner of the consortium. Uh, whether it be member states uh, from Europe or uh, JAXA or NASA. Thank you. Long live India and France friendship.